Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm so excited. We have such a wonderful guest with us. Her name is Barbara Hunt, and her specialty is about forgiveness. And today, she's going to share her story and share what she does, and she's going to give us some valuable tips on forgiveness. So Barbara, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and take it away. Thanks, Stacey. Well, I'm a coach and I help people to move towards being ready to forgive and then I help them actually forgive. And I work on retreats and I work one to one with people and I hold online Zoom um, events so people can come. I call it a forgiveness field and people mm -hmm. can come and they can work. Um, you work with your microphone off so nobody's overhearing you. So it's quite private. But that, that, um, that's something I'm experimenting with more. Like, so group people, groups of people can forgive. And, um, and then also I am also I, I teach about forgiveness to, in, in workshops. And I've just recently been invited to the International Forgiveness Conference, uh, which is very exciting. Yeah. And, uh, and then I'm also a musician. So I oh, have a busy wow. mixed, yeah, a mixed bag. Wow. Now, you know, so many people um, suffer, you know, because of forgiveness, you know, uh, in our society, um, you know, it's, it's natural to get into confrontations with people. People come from dysfunctional families. Over 70% of families are dysfunctional. You know, people go through life and, you know, they meet people, they get hurt by people. And sometimes it's very hard to recover. And what people don't realize is that, you know, if we don't learn how to forgive and move on in life, it could destroy us. So, you know, why don't you tell us a little about the power of forgiveness and why it's so important to learn how to forgive others? Yeah, thank you. Well, there's there's a lot to it. I think when when I wrote my book, Forgiveness Made Easy, I identified five major obstacles to why we find it so hard. And I think everyone knows that it's a good idea, uh, but I think a lot of us find it really hard to actually do it. And one of the really important things I realized as I began coaching people one to one and working on the retreats where we'd have 22 people and we take them all through forgiveness work during that week as part of what they were doing with us. Um, I, we realized that there's no relationship necessarily between someone's difficulty in forgiving something and what actually happened. So I'll give you an example. We had one mm -hmm. particular retreat that I remember, a woman who had been insulted by a family member at a wedding seemed to have more difficulty than one of the other clients who'd had severe abuse during her yeah. childhood. So there isn't necessarily a correlation. So, and I think sometimes when we hear stories of forgiveness, they can be very inspiring, but somehow out of reach, how do people manage to forgive something like a Holocaust or their child being killed or or maimed or, you know, all these dreadful things that can happen to people. And so I, I got really interested in the potential of forgiveness, but mm -hmm. also why we don't do it. And the potential is amazing. And there's there have been scientific studies that show that it reduces your cortisol level, it lowers your stress, it improves your you know just your blood wow. pressure yeah. those physiological things which is amazing but also you feel better in yourself you know your yeah. heart feels lighter you're more likely to have easy relationships with other people so not necessarily just with the person who you need to forgive but with the other people in your life because a lot and of also go on. ahead no no go ahead well i was just going to say one last thing is is there's also when we talk about forgiveness um there's 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 three different kinds if you like one is where we need to forgive somebody who's you know created something in our lives that we've really struggled with that they may have betrayed us or whatever yeah. so th th those who need to be forgiven by us then there's who we need to ask forgiveness of or feel like we want to be forgiven by and then there's also self-forgiveness and although I, I deal with all of those things. I think sometimes in our minds, we sort of just squish them all together. Yeah. And when we're, when we're talking about forgiveness, it's just helpful to have all those out on the table. And then one, just one last thing as well, I just wanted to add right at the beginning of our conversation is that I use a really particular definition of forgiveness, which is from one of my first teachers, Kay Bradford Brown, he, he taught me about forgiveness. And he said, forgiveness is the absolute refusal to hold ill will against someone for what they did or didn't do. And I'll say it again, because it's quite long. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is the absolute refusal to hold ill will 
against someone for what they did or didn't do. And I really like it because it shows you sort of like this idea, like when, when things happen in our lives, you know, we kind of like the gather all the little incidents that somebody's done. If, if we're in a long term relationship, yeah. and then the bigger things that people have done. And then, you know, we're sort of like gathering all our our resentments up and right. the ill will, letting go of the ill will. So that could be a resentment, a grudge, a gripe, a grievance is this. And so you so I think we don't really notice what's going on in our hearts and what's gathered there because yeah. a lot of the time we can just go well I understand that or I don't think about them anymore or oh that was such a long time ago I just will never see them again but it doesn't mean that we're not actually carrying it it's not still in there you know yeah. it's in our hearts so. I think so many people suffer from repressed emotions, you know, things happen over the course of their life and they just repress it and repress it and repress it. And what happens is, is that I think those people, a lot of times over time become numb because they're not, they're not letting go. They're not forgiven. It's everything is being pushed down and it's become a habit forming behavior, I think. And then, so when things happen to them, I think they continue to repress, whether they consciously know or unconsciously. And those are the people who can't relate well to other human beings. Those are the people that you see with a frown on their face when you're shopping. You're like, oh my God, that person looks so miserable. <laughs> you know, these are the people that can't enjoy life because they carry so much repressed emotions. Now, what is your feeling about repressed emotions and forgiveness? Well, I, I love it that, that this is such an important angle that you're saying because sometimes people really don't know that they're carrying it in their hearts and i have i have a very broad approach to forgiveness i think everyone needs to forgive everyone for everything mm -hmm. all the time no exceptions because because if we don't do that it's a bit like not ever taking the you know the, the garbage out if you want yeah and so it's like so so you it just piles up and yeah. you, you need to let it go and and i think because we don't really have a way of dealing with our mental health. We're not really taught very much about that at school, culturally, yeah. you, you know, you see people on movies going, oh, just, you know, get over it or, you know, get yeah. revenge. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of, of, well, how do you work through the challenging things? Luckily, you know, lots of people are now in therapy and they can get support yes. on their early childhood wounding. And there's much more information available about childhood trauma, adverse childhood experiences. And in, in my opinion, we need to forgive our parents just yeah. because we've had parents. No parents are perfect. I've been a parent. I was not perfect. Right. My son, luckily, is able to forgive me. We've <laughs> even talked about it a lot. And uh, so, there, so there's, you know, there there are opportunities for us to just use forgiveness as a practice. Yes. And when I when I lead co coaching workshops, I get people to write down the names of the people that they need to forgive, and then add up the number of years they've held the resentment. Yeah. And then, as a group, if you're working with a group of maybe twenty people, you have over and th over a thousand years of resentment just in that group of people. Yeah. You know, so, so it, I think it's it gives you an idea of like how much it matters that we do our work, you know, our inner work, and also it frees. If your heart is freer and lighter, you're more able to do the things that really matter to you in the world and things that bring you joy. And yes. you haven't got like you were saying about repressed emotion. You're not always worrying, oh, is that going to come up? Or or I think that's what makes us triggerable. You know, when you get triggered by something that happens that yeah. isn't really that big of a deal, and then suddenly you're, you know, shouting at the cat or your partner or whatever, yeah. because it's not really about the thing. It's about something that's been unheld and unhealed yes. from the past. And, you know, something small could just trigger it, you know, and you don't even realize it's just, it, it's just, it's, it's related, but somewhat not, you know, it's, it's something completely different, but you associate it in your mind with something else. And then all of a sudden these emotions just rise from you. And then, like you said, you could be yelling at the cat. You could be yelling at your husband. You can be yelling at your partner. And it's because all those underlying repressed emotions. And, you know, when I started working with a coach and a therapist about certain issues, I realized that, you know, they were things that I repressed over the course of the years. And once I learned how to forgive, and once I learned how to let go, just put all that on a dove and let the dove fly away. 
it was just, it was so relieving. Now, I think what people think, you have to hear it from the person. And I even, I've heard an instance lately, the person wanted, felt that another person was responsible for something. And they wanted that person to say, I was wrong, I was responsible. But they, that person, I think, really needed to forgive. And whether that person is wrong or not, Sometimes I think it's not about hearing from the other person, you know, forgiveness or I'm sorry or apology. It's you letting go and you being able to say, I forgive that person for da 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 da, you know, don't you think? Like in, explain to people that they don't really have to hear it from the other person. Cause I think people think that when you forgive, you, they have to hear it from that individual. And that's not true, right? Yeah, not true at all. You're absolutely right. That's why I, I like the emphasis on the definition that I use, because it's you refusing to hold the ill will. And that doesn't mean that's regardless of whether somebody apologizes or not. And sometimes the other person isn't able to apologize. What if they've already died or you can't contact yes. them or you don't even know who it is? If there's right. some, you know, some incidents, you might know who it is. So the and, and when I work with people one to one, it's really important that that they understand that that may never happen right but when i when i do a coaching session with somebody and specifically doing their forgiveness work we'll have an imaginary conversation where sometimes the person does apologize and so even though it's not happened in real life that yes. it's happened in their imaginary life and that can be very relieving to the heart but i totally agree with you that that you can't make that a conditional aspect of I, i'll forgive you if you for, if you say you're sorry or if you make amends because otherwise you're dependent on the other person and, and what's amazing about the power of forgiveness is you can choose what you keep in your heart there's there's lots of really lovely quotes about well not lovely but interesting quotes about resentment which is if you if you keep resentment in your body you keep and the word the word resent comes from sentia which is the latin for feel so that means you re-feel all those feelings and it says one of the quotes is holding on to your resentment is like drinking poison and hoping the other person will die or my particular favorite which is like holding on to resentment is like setting yourself on fire and hoping the other person will be bothered by the smoke right because sometimes the other person isn't even conscious that they've done something yeah because we we often misinterpret people's behavior or they haven't texted or you know maybe they've lost their phone but we've gone yeah. well they obviously don't care about that really important text I just sent them. <laughs> and you know and, and we're judging them and they're our hearts closed down and they you know they've just lost their phone and then when yeah. we know they've lost their phone then we kind of recalibrate oh it's okay it wasn't personal but you know all those sort of silly things that we we have we judge and and jump to conclusions and make assumptions and we just can let go of all of that I think too I think people misinterpret people also sometimes someone might say something but they don't really mean to be have it taken in a certain way and then the other person because we're all different we all think differently the other person might interpret it completely different and you know an argument might happen or you know and then resentment be begins and you know and sometimes it can go a little too far depending you know on the situation and i think people you know have to really i think communication is key sometimes if it's if it if you're still able to communicate with that person you know then maybe uh, s some communication between the two and then talking it through can bring a sense of forgiveness and a, or a sense of relief don't you think yeah that that's definitely part of it and when i work with clients one to one we always do the imaginary conversation first because okay. often the, the things that we forgive you know like we need to forgive like if there are all these things i'm holding like my resentments against my mother right and then like some of it is very important we must have a conversation about that but this is yeah. like i don't like the fact that she wears dresses that aren't appealing or she's annoying in the mornings or you, know, so, <laughs> but, but you have these things that yeah we do need to have a conversation about that that's really important but i, I that's why i feel like our forgiveness work is something that happens inside of us yes and then when we feel like we freed up our hearts that we get clear about well there is something i want to ask her about or i want to mention 
and then and then you have the conversation about that but i don't know about you but if someone comes to me with a whole load of resentment and the reasons why i've done everything wrong i just it's hard to hear and you yeah. just get defensive and you want to explain yourself so i never recommend that you try and do a forgiveness process with the person right without having done some forgiveness work first and then if you are going to do that sort of thing maybe restorative justice or something really important like that happens in a mediated setting where yeah. you've got someone who can you know help you to say the things that need to be said i mean it, you know that kind of work is amazing restorative yeah. justice between criminals and their you know the victims can be extraordinary that's not quite the work that i do i i'm i'm more involved in everyday forgiveness yes. in people just in their everyday lives doing their forgiveness practice taking it seriously as yeah. something that's really powerful i i think we're not now more aware of mindfulness and mm -hmm. meditation and those kinds of powerful things, but forgiveness is a master secular ethics practice or spiritual practice or personal development practice, however you want to call it. But it's because it's so hard to let go, you know, like we're, we're little monkeys really we want to hold on to things. We want to hold yeah. on to people and experiences and things and money and, you know, and actually right. the, the letting go of something that has pained us is really hard. Yeah. And, we're not taught how. No, we're not taught how. And it's it's a learning process. And, you know, that's why it's so important to go to either a coach or to go to a, a, a therapist that specializes in forgiveness, you know, or and to do exercises that will lead you to the point where you can get to that point and say, I forgive that person. Yeah. Now, yeah. if a person um, is not ready, because sometimes people are verbally do not want to talk to another person. You know, it's very hard for especially introverted, shy people, or they're embarrassed of the whole situation itself, or they just don't want to share it because it's so painful. Is there anything people could do at home that could start the process so it would be a little bit easier? Do you have anything so that's, to suggest? Yeah, lovely question. Uh, there is actually, there are, there are a few things. One is to think about the people that you need to forgive. So I, I keep a forgiveness list. I've done this for like 30 years. And in the back of my journal, I just, every now and then I just think, oh, you know, I'm just annoyed by that person. I'll write their name down, you know, or something has happened and I, and I feel triggered. So I'll write the name of the person down or the thing, because it can be circumstances. It can be the weather, particularly if you live in Britain yeah. or it could be, you know, helicopters or whatever, you know, so yeah. it can be things and it's still worth doing your practice. I, you know, I, cause I have an attitude of doing it as a practice that can be a helpful thing. But then when you've written down the name of the person, you can also th do a little bit of thinking. And I write about this in my book where you're looking at what do you get out of holding the resentment? which is a kind of interesting question. So lots of, when I say to my clients that sometimes I say, what do you get out of holding the resentment? They often say nothing. And then when we inquire a little bit deeper, there are lots of things actually that you can get out of holding resentment. And I feel that resentment, when something happens, you know, imagine something really bad happens and then we try and kind of like even it up. And there's even that phrase, don't get mad, get even. Right. Where it's like we're trying to we're trying to balance the thing that happened, which shouldn't have happened, but it did. And so we're trying to so we feel like the resentment kind of like it can act like a, a shield over our hearts. Yeah. Or it feels like, well, if I've got this, then at least I know what the right thing to do is. And that person was wrong. And it's like I feel like it's a boundary and of, and resentment isn't the boundary because I can keep a really clear boundary and say, don't speak to me like that on the phone without right. having resentment. Yeah, I don't have to have my resentment. So it, so it's a really interesting exploration. And there's there we're so afraid of being vulnerable, of letting our, our hearts be open. If someone's yes. been really mean to you, especially when you're younger, if you've had abuse when you're a child or any kind of adverse childhood experience, sometimes it's easier to carry resentment about it, to shut your heart yes. than it is to keep your heart open and feel the pain. Right. And so that's the kind of pre exploration I would do with a client and then also to get them look to look at what's it cost them to hold the resentment, because like you said, sometimes we're not even aware that we're holding it. But yes. when you feel into your heart, it, uh, sometimes I do. I invite the clients to visualize and often they feel like there's a rock in their heart 
or there's a you know like there's a boulder or there's a wall or you know we have those sort of metaphors which yeah. just tell us that there's something that hasn't fully been healed and even though at the time so people teachers like Gabon Mate who does a lot about trauma and addiction yeah. and Thomas Hubel the same collective trauma they say they're very intelligent coping mechanisms so when we hold resentment it can be a smart move to begin with yeah then we start realizing that our whole lives are like this and we're kind of like we can't you know we can't tolerate any discomfort and we and when we're thinking you know you go to bed at night and you're in your bed but the person who you know ruined your life is in there with you because yeah. they're in your heart and so yeah. that's the reason why you're doing the forgiveness work it's, it's so that you can free your heart of what's in the way of you having a, a joyful life now do you use besides you doing a journal and besides um doing forgiveness prayers do you do any type of meditation or chakras because a lot of times when you do the um yoga exercises or the, for the chakra you know especially the heart and the throat you could feel when you're doing the relaxation and the meditation you could feel the heaviness in your heart and you know sometimes you realize there is a heaviness and then you have to try to dig deeper now did you do any type of exercises like that um i I would see those kinds of exercises as indicative that I mm -hmm. needed to do some forgiveness work, but I also really believe in somatic work. Mm -hmm. So it could be that they, it, there's a sort of one, two, three, as in you notice in your yoga practice that, or that your chakras, you feel heavy or something's blocked. You then do some forgiveness work and then you also do whatever the physiological work is that you need to do to release that out of your physiological system your energetic system and your emotional system and then check in again and see what is loosened up in your yoga practice um, because most of the work that i do with my clients is in it's in the realm of the imaginal mm -hmm. and it's journey like journey work brandon Bayes's journey work or ken wilber's 321 processing so it's that sort of my clients work with their eyes closed and we we go through an imaginary process and although it's imaginary it, it seems to relieve things on every level so sometimes people will feel a contraction in their shoulders or in their solar plexus and yes. then by the end of the process that's released as well but i think any kind of personal spiritual development work really needs to happen on all the levels it doesn't yeah. really matter where you start right um, but it needs to go through all of them yeah I feel a lot of people say when you are feeling stressed and you feel overwhelmed and you have, you know, trauma or any obstacles in your life, they do say that you do have pain or you do have discomfort in your shoulders because you are tense, you're stressed, your traps in the back of your, your back are, are tightened. And then you start, some people even develop pain from the trauma and and not being able to forgive because they're under so much stress. And like you said, the cortisol level, that goes up because when you're stressed, your levels go up. So do you also believe, because in journaling, because you talk about writing it down, you know, do you feel like maybe writing a letter to that person might be a good exercise for them? That that can be a really wonderful exercise. In, in the because I created a forgiveness made easy process, which is seven steps. One of the really important steps is confessing the full extent of your resentment. So you, you could do that as a letter. The reason I get my clients to do it out loud is because there's something really powerful about using your throat yes. and hearing yourself saying the words, but oh, yeah. some people love to write it down and then burn it because that helps as a sort of extra yeah. um, gesture of that and also with self-forgiveness i i do that in in several different ways depending on what's the most useful sometimes we have core beliefs that aren't even true about ourselves so we do a bit of exploration with that right. sometimes i use mirrors and sometimes i'll use journaling because it's a lovely practice to especially when you write to yourself barbara i forgive you for not being a perfect parent barbara i forgive you for this issue, blah, blah, blah. And that can be really wonderful to write that out and again, and that's something that you can burn. I, I love the fact that it's there's lots of different ways of doing forgiveness and I'm always interested in what works. 
and yeah. I, I've I've been honing my particular way of doing it, but I'm not saying that mine's the only way. And right. you know, it's like whatever works for you, do it. And it's more, I'm more interested in in encouraging people to think about forgiveness as as a practice, yes. like yoga. You do your yoga practice. You don't say, "Oh, I've done yoga." Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> You do it every day or every week right. or whatever. And it's the same with forgiveness. And and even if you've forgiven, like, for example, I forgave my mom. And this was really important when I discovered I was holding resentment against her. And you right. mentioned earlier on, sometimes there's a lot of shame around holding resentment that we don't even want to admit ourselves. Yeah. My resentment was very much around her illness. She had multiple sclerosis from the time I was 15. That was very impactful to the family. Yeah. And so it was hard for me to admit that I resented her and, well, that situation but when i worked through it i felt like i really shifted a lot and then after she died i did some more forgiveness work and then i had a dream about her one time and then i did some more forgive you know so it's like as you keep going even if somebody has has died you can still do your forgiveness work and it feels like layer after layer and sometimes there's more of one angle than another because when i work with people and maybe they've had a um, an experience in their childhood where say their parents divorced or something. So they might forgive their parents for that aspect. Yeah. But then there may be more later on or other things that the other angles that they need to also work on. And you could, also, you could also see too, is that a lot of people who have not yet forgave, they carry a lot of anger inside them, don't you think? I see a lot yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it's not very pleasant to be around. I think we have an awareness of that for yeah. each other. You know, like if you've got a friend who's bitching about her mother, and she keeps going on and on about it, my mother did this, and you'll never guess what she did. You know, sometimes you can get into agreement about it. But sometimes it can be quite wearing. Yeah. And, 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 but also people don't know that there's a different way of dealing with it, that you don't have to just keep going over the resentment and just how wrong the other person is that there is some kind yeah. of blessed release but there is there's there's often anger involved and and also it's important to see that sometimes it's appropriate anger if yeah. you've been abused as a child or something terrible has happened or someone's stolen from you or betrayed you or there's been some kind of violation you, you need to take action and, and i think one of the other reasons why we find it so hard to forgive is because we think that forgiveness means saying that's okay as yeah. opposed to forgiveness is about what you choose to hold or not hold in your heart right and taking restorative justice action or litigating or divorcing or saying i am not going to keep the door open to you anymore or the relationship's right. over that you keep boundaries but you can do that with an open heart you don't yes. have to hate the other person I found also that sometimes uh, people I've known that carry a lot of um, resentment become toxic. And then, like you said, they become, they're a toxic energy because they carry so much resentment that they don't even realize it, that, that anger, that resentment, all those, those negative emotions, the way they behave because their behavior changes. I've noticed also they mm -hmm. become more toxic energy. And then when you're around them, you feel like they pull you down or they drain your energy. And mm. would you say it's okay sometimes to move away from that person? Because sometimes people feel guilty that they want to help the person, but then in certain, certain situations, if a person's not ready to forgive, you can't force them to forgive. So, no. and actually that's back to a, an earlier point as well, actually, uh, because I think there is a timing to it. Sometimes we're just not ready. To forgive if something recently has happened it's almost like there's too much energy there's too much like anger and and you just yeah. know that that is not going to be on the table for a while and yeah. someone has to like get through it i i feel it's a bit like a wave if something terrible happens and there's a big wave of energy and you kind of have to wait for that to subside a bit before you're ready to look at your forgiveness yeah. and and that i think is probably why some people say that they don't feel ready. But if the wave has passed and it's 10 years down the line and you're still gnashing your teeth about the thing that happened. Yeah. If you, if you start noticing how that's impacting you and the downside, the costs of carrying the resentment, that's when you start thinking, oh, I, f I need to forgive this. I need to somehow move beyond what happened or beyond because, because 
when we start looking at really what's going on under the hood, we realize we're holding the resentment for good reason. Yeah. But there's also really massive downsides to holding the resentment. It costs us in our sleep, in our physiology, in our relationships, yeah. sometimes even in our integrity. If we think oh, of ourselves yes. as somebody who's, you know, an empowered woman, you know, on her spiritual path. And then we're yeah. going and yeah. we're resenting somebody. It's like, it doesn't, it's not a match to how we want to show up in the world. Exactly. And if you think about all the brilliant spiritual teachers and the personal development paths, they're all, they have forgiveness in them. Most oh, sp yeah. traditional spiritual paths have, have forgiveness in them. And it's something that we admire. If you think about the, the, the exemplars like Nelson Mandela or yes. Gandhi or the people who, you know, Martin Luther King, people who really took a stand yes. on, on, I will not carry this resentment with me. Yes. They're very inspiring. So I think that's something we, we do as, yeah. aspire to. And I, I think people have to realize that because if you see any of the, the spiritual um, guides from now or from the past, you know, they they have taught themselves, you know, about love, kindness, forgiveness. Those are their main principles, you know, that they 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 exemplify and they talk about. And, you know, you'll hear them speak some of these people, you'll read their books. And the biggest thing is, is love, kindness, forgiveness, and being able to even love yourself and to be able to forgive yourself, forgive others, because you really can't change it. The past is a past. You can't change it. So, you know, you have to just learn to forgive and move forward. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. That, that It's exactly that. We can't change the past we can't make the past different from the way it was so we have to find a way of being at peace with what happened and that yeah. doesn't mean doing a spiritual bypass on it like saying it's all perfect the way it is because it may be you need to take somebody to court but but it's like it's saying okay so this has happened so how do i find that inside of me that can assimilate it and and move through the experience even if it's if it, even if it was very challenging and you know some people do go through extraordinary you know really terrible terrible experiences yes. and it's wonderful to know that there are ways that you know i've worked with people who I mean literally every single kind of abuse that you can imagine and sometimes even perpetrators you know people who've done terrible things who feel like they need forgiveness yeah. from the other person if we can be compassionate with each other as well and mm -hmm. you know more there but for the grace of god go i kind of attitude you know to be really understanding of everyone like you said right at the beginning everyone has their struggles you know yes. everyone has different you know different experiences as they grow up and we just need ways of helping ourselves to get through those and and yes. being compassionate about what other people's stories are because that's the thing isn't it if we knew everybody's stories we'd just get much more compassionate we would, you know, and I find too, I see this so many times is that people, you know, they make judgments on people and people will react and do things a certain way and they might not just understand it and they make, you know, negative judgments on those people. But, you know, I always say, walk through the person's shoes and then say what you want to say, because a lot of times if you walk through another individual's shoes, you will have a totally different opinion and you will understand why that person may react or behave a certain way. Exactly, exactly. And that also is part of the forgiveness process that I use where they do take the other person's perspective. And what's amazing is often the other person says things and then the person who's just done the process went, God, I never realized I, I had that insight. That was amazing. You know, they, yeah. they have put themselves in the other person's shoes and they can see differently. And yeah, like you said, love and compassion is, you know, we need more of that in our world, especially yes. now with oh, everything definitely. as insane as it is. Yeah. There's, a, there's a quote by the Archbishop Desmond Tutu who recently died. And he said, without forgiveness, there really is no future. Yes. And, and I believe we really need to learn how to do it and practice it. Yes, because I, I think people, you know, it's sad, but when people have hard lives and people have, you know, they may be struggling with their own issues of forgiveness, people kind of thrive off of other people's, you know, 
um, problems and they don't focus on themselves, but they focus on everybody else. And they always have something to say about everybody else. And maybe it's time people look at their own selves and then maybe, you know, do a little tweaking within themselves. Because I, I agree, you know, we're lacking forgiveness in our society. We're lacking love and we're lacking kindness. You know, these are three main components of life that everybody should have, you know, and in order to live a happy, healthy life, we need to have those things in our lives. And as you know, I don't want to see when, when trauma comes, everybody gets together and tries to help. That's great. But what about when there's no trauma, we should be behaving mm -hmm. like this 24 seven, not when something traumatic happens and everyone comes out of the woodwork to help. Why aren't they doing that? all the time you know we have to make it a part of our lifestyle is to to love to be compassion compassionate to to have forgiveness you know to show kindness you know this is something that should be you know installed in everyone's behavior i totally agree absolutely now you came out with a book i'd like to know a little bit more about your book can you tell me a little about your book yeah sure can i show it to you as well oh i'd love <laughs> you to show it to me <laughs> There you go. Um, Forgiveness Made Easy, The Revolutionary Guide to Moving Beyond Your Past and Truly Letting Go. And, and the reason I called it The Revolutionary Guide is because I really believe that if we did start practicing our forgiveness, we would revolutionize what we chose to create as a humanity. And uh, yeah, and, and also because forgiveness is not easy. I don't know anyone who went, oh, that's, that's really easy to forgive. And we struggle with difficult things. I was working with a client the other day who was so ashamed because of his resentment of his um, in-laws. Yeah. And it was, and it's really interesting that we, even that, it was almost like he, he said, I've never talked to anybody about this because I don't think I should be able to, I shouldn't be holding on to it. And people are forgiving, you know, Holocaust survivors are forgiving their abusers and but I can't do, I can't do this. It was really interesting. And I think yeah. it's quite a common experience. And so the, the reason I wrote the book was because of the seven years I was spending on, uh, taking people on, on these retreats so that we were working together to help people do their forgiveness work. And so I was able to have practical experience of what really helped people and yeah. i identified the five major obstacles to forgiveness so th that one of them is having a definition of work that works so that's the definition that i use the absolute yes. refusal to hold ill will vulnerability is another obstacle we don't want to be vulnerable and then looking at what the payoffs and the costs are of of holding the resentment to really understand that that there's we're getting something out of the resentment and if you think about culturally as well how many movies and books there are and television programs that are about resentment yes i bet you can't name me 10 that are about forgiveness right because it's not it's not sexy it's not it's not you know it's like if you think about what would happen if we just had somebody something happens in a movie and then they go through a process of restorative justice no one would watch it but you no. want to watch star wars and harry potter and people getting revenge and standing up to the man you know it's it's, yes. it's a fascinating cultural thing that we have where we're interested in stories of resentment and and revenge and in fact there was i think there was a bill maher piece where he went through i think 26 different movies with the name vengeance in the title wow just in the title so so we have a cultural love affair with vengeance yeah. and resentment and not with forgiveness and and that's really my mission is to to help talk about forgiveness in a way that's accessible so in in my book i i really even i even did the thing where i was trying to make it really easy for people yes. to understand and i tell like a children's story mm -hmm. to kind of illustrate you know yeah. the story of like a, a, this young girl her dad is mean to her at christmas and then she brings it up every year and it's kind of, i make it into kind of like a big story but yeah. it's it's um to, to just really make it easy for us to understand what the obstacles are and then the other thing in my book that i talk about is the potential for forgiveness the vision that you and i can tune into about well what would be possible if we really were practicing it all the time you know yeah. something happens you choose to let it go you have a tiny weeny little list because you're always doing your forgiveness or what if you know like we did with the lockdowns we have a two-week forgiveness lockdown where everybody yeah. has to do their forgiveness work and then we've got free hearts to co-create a much more beautiful world that works for everyone oh you know yes 
So the potential of it is extraordinary because we could technically do that. We could forgive everybody for everything. So then you're back to the really interesting question, which is why don't we? Right. Why don't we? Why don't we do it? And that was what my book was trying to address was it's not easy. No one's doing it. It's yeah. amazing. The potential of it is amazing. If someone said, oh, I've got this pill and it reduces your you know, blood pressure and it you know, kind of uh, improves your heart health and it improves your relationships and your sleep and you feel better about yourself and gives you more energy and it improves all your relationships. You know, you go uh, get me those bottles of that, you know, that pill. Yeah. I'd have it. You know, I want, you know, buy one, get one free from my friends as well. And that's what forgiveness offers. Yes. And no one's doing it. So that's a really interesting question for us to ask ourselves as a humanity. Why not? Well, you know, I, first of all, I think society itself makes vengeance sound sexy and it's an adrenaline rush for many people, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, people get an adrenaline rush of seeing others suffer, seeing others, you know, become vengeant on each other. But, you know, they don't show what that person suffers on the after effect they're just showing you the 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 fighting and the this and then that and the planning the, the murder and da, da 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 but they're not showing how that person feels after the fact you know what's what that person is suffering inwardly and i think people don't you know they realize when they start to think about forgiveness it's not an easy task it's a slow process and it takes a lot of hard work and you actually feel more pain when you're going through the process, but then at, at towards the, towards the, I would say m when you get to like maybe three fourths or, you know, 60% of the way you start feeling a relief, you start feeling better in the beginning, little by little, by little, by little. But then all of a sudden, when you are getting towards the end and you're making your way over the hump, the hill, you start feeling <laughs> like a new person. And at the end, you just, I feel like you get a rush of energy. That adrenaline is there. You know, you feel, you know, like there's a new life awaiting you. You know, you can think clearly, you can focus and you can start to want to do things that you didn't want to do before because that negative energy was pulling you down. That, that you know, all those things that you didn't, you, you were, you know, you, you were holding in now are gone. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. a, you're free. It's a freeness, you know. Yeah, that's exactly it. it is. And it's true freedom because yeah. you've freed your heart. Whereas if you've just taken revenge, now you're looking behind you, hoping that they're not going to get you back <laughs> again. So you're not free. You no. just hooked yourself into like greater jeopardy. The true yes. freedom is forgiveness. Exactly. Exactly. Now, where's your website? How can people find you? My website is www.forgivenessmadeeasy.co.uk. That's wonderful. And do you have your books on there? Your, you know, yeah. my my books are on Amazon. Okay. And, um, and and I also have a little YouTube channel, which is Barbara J Hunt, and that has a few little forgiveness um, interviews like this or other pieces. And I'm going to do more um, more teaching on on YouTube this year. That's part. Oh, of the excellent, plan. excellent. So for one more time before we go, tell everybody your website again so it sticks in their brain. Okay, thank you. www.forgivenessmadeeasy.co.uk Excellent. You know, Barbara, this has been a wonderful conversation. I've received so much wealth of information from you. You, you know, you are a truly wonderful person and you could see you have forgave, you know, because you could see the glowingness, the happiness, you know, and that's what people are going to receive once they learn how to forgive. So it's definitely, you know, worth people looking into if they feel that heaviness in their heart and they know they have resentment, they should definitely come to your website, look at your stuff, and then maybe learn and actually take on the task of forgiveness. Because, you know, I could say for myself, you know, going through things in life, once I forgave, you know, I felt like a new person and I was able to move forward in a much state or better state of mind. So definitely thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for what you do. Such a pleasure. And it is like a miracle. And I also like to see this as well, which is your forgiveness is an act of amnesty for the whole of humanity. Yes. It's not just you, you're doing it into for all of us. So yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. 
Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming on the show, Barbara. And, you know, I'd love to hear from you again. And maybe we could talk further in the future and have you back on the show. Love to. Yeah. Are you thank you for your work, too. Oh, you're very thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, Stacey. Have great a great day. You. Bye, everyone.